Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to your favorite physics channel, College Physics. Here you will find work solutions to past papers by experienced teachers and ASL students. So please subscribe to our channel and forward it to other Cambridge learners. Thank you. Okay, this is paper two, which is on multiple choice questions, variant 22 from May, June 2021. Let's start. One, which piece of apparatus is most suitable for measuring the mass of a pencil or sharpener? Now, whenever we're talking about mass, it will be either a digital balance or a stone balance or a physical balance, anything that measures mass, something that's in kgs or grams, stuff like that. A measuring cylinder obviously measures volume of liquid or an irregular solid. Newton meter measures the force and ruler measures uh, length, breadth, whatever, something, uh, anything that has to do with distance. Then we have four balls with different masses, which have dropped from the heights shown. Air resistance may be ignored. Which ball has the smallest average speed? Now, whenever we're talking about something falling down, something is falling down. Now, due to gravity, because of the pull from the earth, that object, when it falls, it accelerates. Now, what is that acceleration? It's called acceleration of free fall, which is also known as G, which is around 9.81 meters per second squared but uh for cambridge we consider it as 10 meters per second squared because it's easier for calculations so that is g what does this mean it means that after every one second the speed increases by 10 meters per second therefore the more length or the more distance an object covers it leads to it having a higher increase in speed and we're asked which ball has the smallest smallest average speed it obviously means the ball width obviously means the ball width the least distance that uh, the ball that is uh, that the ball that fell from the least distance the ball that covered the least distance the lowest height the one that's dropped for the lowest height therefore in that case it's a now if you're thinking about the masses that or if something is four kgs it's going to have a higher speed than the one that's 10 kg because uh, sorry the one, the one that's 1 kg because it's going to have lesser air resistance that's not true because we're told that the air resistance is ignored if air resistance wasn't ignored yes there could be a different answer but i don't think so because usually uh, again the the differences between uh, masses are kind of large it's 4 kg versus 1 kg there's a large difference but if we're talking about let's say 1 and 1.2 kg right and you're saying that 1.2 kg uh, will cover, will cover, they're both 4 meters above the ground. And you're saying that 1.2 kg will have higher speed. You will be correct because it has a higher mass. So it will uh, have lesser air resistance. But in this, I mean, it will have lesser air resistance. But in this, that's not the truth. TK because air resistance doesn't exist. Therefore, when something is fra falling from whatever distance it is i mean whatever mass it is whatever distance it is the only thing that may that changes the speed that affects the speed is the length or the height from which it's falling and the g that's it doesn't matter what mass it is unless there is air resistance if there is air resistance then mass does make a difference in your speed because higher the mass less the air resistance number three a ball is thrown vertically upwards through the air Wait, let me just give you guys an example for this one. I know I've like extended this one's explanation quite a lot, but it, I know it's still difficult for people to understand. For example, you have a feather. Okay, you have a feather and you have... Uh, let's just say over here we have a... Oops. We have a feather. And we have a ball. Right? Now, if we're talking... If we're talking about air resistance being present take okay? it air resistance being present what will happen in this is that the feather will have lesser speed than the ball true lesser speed and this will have higher speed why it will have lesser speed why it will have lesser average speed because of the higher air resistance the ball will have a lesser air resistance than the feather because the feather is very lightweight it will have a higher air resistance that will prevent it from being as fast or even faster than the ball. But if there's no air resistance, then which one will have the higher average speed? 
this one the feather would have a high average speed because it has a higher height therefore for every one second it's covering 10 meters per second it has a higher height the more times it take the more it will accelerate okay okay question three a ball is thrown vertically downwards oh sorry upwards to the air air resistance acts in the ball which graph shows how its speed varies with time air resistance acts on the ball so in this one we do have air resistance which graph shows how its speed varies with time so when a ball is thrown upwards we have to tell how the speed varies with time when a ball is thrown upwards let me just make two arrows when it's moving upwards or when it's moving downwards it's moving upwards and then over here it's going to be moving downwards when it's moving upwards uh, because of air resistance and also because of the fact that gravity is downwards, its speed will decrease. Decrease in speed. Okay? Decrease in speed. Now, uh, the acceleration or deceleration with which it's moving upwards is 10 meters per second squared. The deceleration with which it's moving upwards. Now, when it comes downwards, its speed will increase. Sorry, its speed will increase because it's moving downwards. Its speed will increase with what? By 10 meters per second every second. So second squared is acceleration moving downwards. It's going to be 10 meters per second squared. However, when it's moving downwards, you know at one point, your speed increases, 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 and then it reaches what? Terminal velocity, which is constant speed. So it's either B or d because both of these show what it shows terminal velocity or speed coming to a constant point now is it b or is it c we know when you're moving upward okay your speed decreases right but the rate of decrease of speed decreases i'm going to explain to you guys this is a little confusing but if you really focus you can understand for example it's moving upwards right and the speed here is where we threw it, right? At the bottom. We threw it here at a speed of 20 meters per second. Example. Okay, it's not really possible, but let's just say 20 meters per second. At this point, it becomes 10 meters per second. Take it. Becomes 10 meters per second. This point, it becomes 6 meters per second. These are equal points, right? this point it becomes i don't know two meters per second okay now what is the difference in speed it went from 20 to 10 the decrease in speed was 10 meters per second from 10 to 6 the decrease in speed was four meters per second from 6 to 2 the decrease in uh from 6 to let's just say one from 6 to 3 the decrease was three meters per second so the speed is decreasing but what is this this is the change in speed so the rate of change of speed is also decreasing right speed is decreasing but the rate of change of speed is de decreasing because of air resistance say so what's going to happen is the rate of change of speed will decrease this is what this is acceleration okay acceleration as you all know, acceleration is rate of change of speed. So we can see that acceleration is decreasing. Okay? So there's going to be constant acceleration. Acceleration will be constant because that is because of the increase or decrease of speed. Uh, we're going to check in which one will the rate of change of speed decrease. Let's go to B. The rate here... You know how you fi figure out the rate, right? You draw a triangle. For example, I'm taking this point. So I'm going to draw a triangle at this point. No. It has to be level. So we have a triangle here and then we have a triangle here. As you can see that this triangle has a higher depth the one at the bottom you can see that the depth of this and the depth of that which kiski depths are there which has a, a more depthy slope this one 
so in this the rate of change of speed is increasing it's basically saying it went from 10 meters second oh, sorry 20 meters 20 20 meters per second to uh 18 meters per second and then over here it went from 5 meters per second to 1 meters per second that there's a higher jump here which is further in time or higher decrease in speed further in time than at the beginning of time obviously when the time starts the decrease in speed will be more than the further decrease in speed so it's not correct so the answer will be d it will be d and let's just see if we're right the rate of decrease of speed of this part is more than the rate of decrease of speed of this part. Wait, I didn't draw it correctly. The rate of decrease of speed of this part, this, is so much more steeper than this. Therefore, the rate of decrease of speed is decreasing. Just as we saw here, rate of speed is, rate of change of speed is decreasing. So the answer will be D, and then we see the terminal velocity at the end. Number four. What is the best description of the meaning of mass of an object? Now we know with mass comes what? Inertia. So A, the space occupied by the object. No, that, that basically it speaks about the volume. The force that gravity exerts on an object. Uh, yes, that does depend on the mass, but it also depends on the planet because the force obviously changes with the planet. See the resistance of the object in changes in motion. Yes, because that's talking about inertia. The closeness of packing of the molecules, that's about density. Number five. A measuring cylinder contains 40 centimeter cube of water. A stone of mass 90 grams is lowered into the water so that it is fully submerged in the water. So this stone, it has a mass of 94 grams. And it has the volume of, it went from 40 to 7 point, sorry, 40 to 76. So the volume of the stone is 76 minus 40, which is 36 centimeter cube. Now you just have to find the density. The density will be 94 upon 36. And the answer for that will be 2.6 take it 6 the extension load graph for spring is shown the unstretched length of the spring is 17 centimeter when an object is suspended from the spring the length is 19.2 centimeters so it went from being 17 centimeters to 19.2 centimeters therefore what is the extension the extension is 1718192.2 that is the extension 2.2 centimeters that is the extension so 2.2 take it what is the weight of the object so we just bring it to the load and as you can see it is 3 newtons so the answer for number 6 is d a satellite orbits the Earth in an anti-clockwise direction at a constant speed. When the satellite is in the position shown, in which direction does the resultant force act upon it? So let's talk about the forces acting on the satellite first. The engine force is towards A, the force that the the force that it applies. The force that it applies in the forward for, forward direction or towards A is the force from the engine of the satellite. Sorry, engine of this or whatever it has. Take care. D is gravity. The force that Earth pulls the satellite inwards, right? That's the gravity towards the satellite. Now, because of A and D, because of A and D, it moves in this direction. Say that is the this is the direction of velocity. This is the direction. It's not the direction of force, it's the direction of velocity or the direction of motion of the satellite, not forces. Only two forces are applied on the satellite. One is A and one is D. And you know when something is moving in a circular motion, the resultant force has to be centripetal force, which is towards the inside of the earth or pointing towards the center. In this case, it is D. 
A tennis ball has a mass of 57 gram. A tennis player hits the tennis ball with a tennis racket. The tennis ball has a velocity of 25 meters per second when it hits the racket. The velocity of the tennis ball when it leaves the racket's, uh, player's racket is 15 meters per second in the opposite direction from its approaching direction. The average force exerted by the tennis racket on the ball is 35 newtons. For how long is the tennis ball in contact with the tennis racket? So let's just draw our situation first. We have a sorry, we have a tennis ball. It's moving with a velocity of twenty five meters towards the racket. So let me draw it. We have a tennis ball. It's moving with the direction of this is a tennis racket, for example. It's moving with the direction of twenty five meters per second. Then it moves back with. A velocity of let's just say because it's moving in the opposite direction 15 meters per second and this is negative 25 meters per second because you know velocity is affected by the direction and even in the previous video we spoke about we just simply donate towards the right hand side as positive and towards the left hand side as negative now this is what is this this is known as when something is uh, going towards it one direction and then moving towards another direction is known as rebound. The ball is rebounding. Rebounding. When we're talking about rebound, we add the initial and final momentum. That's the law. Because uh, change in momentum is mv minus mu. Now, as you can see, u, this is u, u is negative. So it's going to be mv minus m minus u. So this will be mv minus minus mu. So mv plus mu. Therefore, when we talk about rebounding, we have, we add the momentum, the initial and the final momentum. We always do this because that's always the case. So the initial, and if let's just uh, add the initial and final momentum. The initial, uh, sorry, the formula of impulse. We're going to use the formula of impulse because it's talking about the time. So force into time is impulse is equals to mv plus mu so in this case will be 25 multiplied by 57 plus 57 multiplied by 35 do that and then you divide this by what is the force not so not 35 there is the force not 35 25 and then this is by 15 divide this by 35 and then you find the time and let me remind you one the most important thing is that this is 57 grams take it 57 grams and you know you have to write it down in an si unit so it's actually supposed to be it's actually supposed to be 0 0.0.057 kgs 0 0.057 kgs 57 grams is equal to 0 0.057 kgs and the answer for 8 will then be c 0 0.065 seconds question 9 this question is about four methods used to produce electrical energy which method has a correct description okay a uh, hydroelectric power station the energy source is renewable or not yes hydroelectric has water water will never run out the oceans we of 75 percent of all this water so it is renewable emits carbon dioxide no so a is correct you can check the other options but a is correct a coal uh let's just say obviously coal power fire station i mean coal fired power station will emit carbon dioxide a wind turbine will not emit carbon dioxide a nuclear power station it is renewable uh, but it will it will also emit uh, carbon dioxide or it will uh, produce nuclear waste. Number 10. A stone is released from high, from rest. Okay, rest. Matab is initial velocity u is equal to zero from a high building on earth. Air resistance is negligible. Say, what is the velocity when it has fallen 5 meters? So, you know, when air is resistance, we have constant, constant free fall 
acceleration ठीक है which in this case is 9.81 meters per second squared this is only when air resistance is negligible say so uh, in this case when we have constant acceleration we use formulas v is equals to u plus a t s is equals to u t plus half a t squared and 2 a s is equals to v squared minus u squared and in both of these it requires time so we cannot use these we will use this 2 into 10 into distance is 5 and we know u is 0 therefore is equals to v squared so if you do this v ka answer v square ka answer hai ka 100 and 100 root will give us v which is equals to 10 meters per second so answer for number 10 is b number 11 the power input into an electric motor is 400 volts. The efficiency of the motor is 85%. How much power is wasted? So 85% is equals to output upon input. Input is what? 400 multiplied by 100. So this will get the answer of the output. 340. Take 340 watts. Output will be 340 what? Okay. So, if our input is 400 hai, and output is 340, so be 400 minus 340 is equals to power wasted. So, that answer is 11. A. Question 12. A book has a mass of 400 grams. The surface of the book is in contact with a table that has dimensions 0 0.1 into 2 meters 0 0.1 meters into 2 meters the gravitational field strength g is 10 newtons per kg what is the pressure exerted on the table due to the book i thought we're asked about the pressure so what is the pressure the formula for pressure is equals to force upon area so first we find the force that the book has which is basically its weight which is 400 multiplied by 10 because mass Weight is equals to mg, which is mass multiplied by g. And the value of g on earth is 10 newtons per kgs. So that's the force, which is weight upon area. Uh, uh, we have the area, I mean, we have the dimensions in meters, so we do not need to change. Sorry, the mass is, uh, it says 400 grams, which is 0 0.4 kgs. So I'm going to have to change this. See, if I can forget about this, you can forget about this. So make sure that all of your values are in the significant figures. 0 0.4 kg is multiplied by 10 upon area, which is 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.2. And the answer for pressure would be around 200 newtons per meter squared. That will be D. 13. A horizontal metal plate of area 0 0.5 meter squared lies at the bottom of a lake at a depth of 40 meters the density of the water is 1000 kgs per meter cube and the gravitational field strength g is 10 newton per kg what is the down force acting on the plate due to the water so we know that we have a formula for pressure that some of the pressure underneath water right the formula for that is p is equals to rho g h and then we have to find the force, not the pressure. Now we know that force is equals to pressure into area because pressure is equals to force upon area, right? Therefore, force is equals to pressure into area. It's the same formula. So let's find force. First, we find pressure. Pressure is equals to raw GH. Raw or density is 1000 kgs per meter cube multiplied by g which is 10 multiplied by depth or height which is 40 this is pressure and then area we have 0 0.5 meters squared we have all our values and the answer for this is c 200 kilo newtons which is 200,000 newtons which row describes the forces between the molecules and the motions uh, so between the molecules and the motion of molecules in the gas the forces between them are very weak if we had strong forces between molecules of the gas they would be pulled together and they wouldn't remain as a gas so it would turn into either a liquid or a solid motion of molecules they do not vibrate vibration is for solids they move 
freely. So the answer for 14 is C. 15. Very small pollen grains are suspended in the water. A bright light shines from this side. Okay. We have our eye here. We have a microscope. We're viewing the pollen grains in the water via a microscope. And then we have a bright light coming in from this side. When looked in the microscope, the small specks of light are seen to be moving in random jerky manner. Small specks of light, obviously, those are the pollen grains because there's a light reflecting off of them. So those pollen grains appear as small specks of light. They're moving in a random jerky manner. What does that mean? It's moving like this. For example, this is one pollen grain. It's moving as such. What is this? This is Brownian motion. It's moving in Brownian motion. Or random jerky manner. What are the moving specks of light? First of all, we know that they're water mo- pollen grains because you cannot see water molecules. Even via an electric microscope, you cannot see molecules. You cannot see atoms. So it's definitely pollen grains. Now, pollen grains, if they were being hit by other pollen grains, then it would, it would, what would have been written here? It would have been written that small specks of light seem to be bouncing against each other and the container, but they're not touching each other. It's not like one is coming from here and one is coming from here and they, they collide and then they move on separate ways. That that's not what's happening. We have small specks and they're moving randomly without anything touching them. They're not colliding with anything. Why? Because these pollen grains are actually colliding by what? water molecules and you cannot see the water molecules therefore according to your eye it's just pollen specks that are moving in a jerky manner where else what is actually happening is that pollen grains are being hit by the water molecules that you cannot see therefore they're moving in a random jerky manner number 16 a hole is drilled in a metal plate what happens to the length of the plate and the diameter of the hole when the plate is cooled so we have a metal plate and we drill a hole in it And obviously, when you drill a hole in it, there's contact between the actual drill and the metal plate because you are creating an opening in it. There's friction. Due to that friction, there is heat. Now, that heat causes the expansion of metal. So what happens? Wait, metal. So what happens? The length of the plate during uh, the hole is being drilled. The length increases. And when it cools down, the length obviously decreases. And also, the diameter of the hole decreases. Because when the metal has cooled down, it uh, uh, what happens to it is that it... Uh, what's the word? I forgot. Is it, oh, it contracts. It contracts. So the length of the plate decreases and the diameter of the hole decreases. So the answer for 16 is A. Number 17. Which statement describes a sensitive liquid in glass thermometer? Refer to the word sensitive. Sensitive liquid in glass thermometer. Sensitive means that even if there's a very slight uh, temperature change, you're able to view a large change on the thermometer in order for you to it grasp your attention. So let's see your options. A, a thermometer which can be used to measure very high and very low values of temperature. That would be not that sensitive. Because it would have to vary from a very low point to a very high point. For example, let me just draw a thermometer. Okay. Imagine this is the inside part of a thermometer. Let's say we have 0 to 100, right? And uh, an increase in temperatures by 50 degrees. So if we're talking about a normal, temper- normal thermometer, it moves from here to here, right? But if... If we have a thermometer that measures very high and very low temperature values, so for example, this is minus 100 and this is 200 because this has very high and very low values of temperature. In this, if 50 degrees uh, increase, so this would be zero, this would be 100, so it would, this is the length that would increase. Compare it to the one that we previously had. The length is very less. The increase in length is very less because 0 would be here and 50 would be here. And you wouldn't be able to tell if this is 49 or 50 or 47 or 51 because all these values are so close. So that does not that is not a sensitive liquid in glass thermometer. If it was sensitive, for 50, it would go from here to here. 
Do you get it? So that you can easily tell if this is 50 or 51 or 49, okay? B, a thermometer which gives the same increase in length of the liquid for each degree of temperature rise. Yes, that is true. Every thermometer has to follow this, that the increase in length for each degree rise in temperature has to be equal, but it still does not describe why would that be sensitive. A thermometer which is accurate because it has been calibrated, that is every single thermometer. Still, we're not talking about a specific sensitive thermometer. D, a thermometer which gives a large increase in length of the liquid for each degree of temperature rise. That is correct because that would make this thermometer sensitive. Okay? 18. A block of aluminum of mass 2 kgs has an initial temperature of 20 degrees. It, abo it absorbs 7,300 joules of thermal energy. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 913 joules per kg degree Celsius. What is the final temperature of the aluminum block? Now, you all know the formula Q is equals to negative mc delta t. So, we'll write that down. Q is equals to negative mc delta t. Now, we have to find the final temperature or the temperature change. Temperature change would be Q upon mc. Q, which is the absorbed energy, is 7300 upon one second the mass is 2 kgs multiplied by c is 913 so 7300 upon 2 multiplied by 913 is equals to around 3.99 or is equals to temperature changes 4 degrees celsius so the initial temperature is 20 and then the temperature change it absorbs uh 7300 and it it increases by 4. So the final temperature would be 24. 19. A student sets up four cans. Each can contain the same mass of water at 90 degrees. All cans are identical except for the outside surfaces. The outside surfaces. Which will cool down the fastest. Obviously, in order for it to cool down the fastest, it would have to lose heat the fastest. What loses or absorbs heat the fa faster is when it's black. And also it has to be dull because shiny reflects. So black and dull. So the answer of 19 is A. 20. Thermal energy is transferred by conduction in a metal bar. Which statement is not correct? A. Fast vibrating ions leave the surface. Okay. B. Fast moving electrons carry thermal energy. Sorry, free, uh, free moving electrons carry thermal energy through the bar. Okay, ions vibrate and strike neighboring ions to make them vibrate. Okay, D. Ions vibrate but do not change position. Now, out of all of these, this is correct. Ions vibrate but do not change position because ions cannot move. Only free electrons can move. According to that, this is correct too because free electrons can move. Ions only vibrate and then they strike the neighbors. Free vibrating ions do not leave the surface. Only electrons leave the surface. Only electrons change place. Positive charges do not change place. 21. A water wave passes into a region where the wave travels more slowly. V is equals to F lambda. So it travels more slowly, so velocity decreases. As it passes into the slow region, what happens to the frequency and what happens to the wavelength? Now, frequency only changes when the source is changing. When the source changes. The source of wave, whatever vibration is creating the, for, uh, the wave, if that remains the same, the frequency remains constant. And in this case, we're not told that the source of wave or what is creating wave is changing, so the frequency will be constant. Therefore, velocity and wavelength are directly proportional. If one increases, the other increases. If one decreases, the other decreases. So wavelength decreases. So the answer for one is C. 22. Light traveling at a speed of 3 into 10 to power 8 meters per second strikes the surface of a glass block and undergoes refraction as it enters the block. The diagram shows the ray of light before and after it enters the block. What is the speed of light in glass? 
So now for this, you know we have two different um two different equations. First we have which talks about n is equals to c upon v, and then we have n is equals to sine r sine i upon sine r. Take it. This is about the refractive index. Then you equal them, which is c upon v is equals to sine i upon sine r. C, we know the C is 3 into 10 to the power 8. V, we have to find V. Sine I, incident wave is sine 55 upon sine 33. And the answer for this would be B. 2 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. 23. Which statement about the image of an object formed in a plane mirror is correct? So we have a mirror and we have an object, we have an apple, or whatever, doesn't matter. And you view the image, the image is viewed as if it is here. Okay, this doesn't really exist, but you view it as if it's here. It appears further to you because when you're viewing it, when you're viewing it, it appears further to you because the length has increased because if you look at it over here the image is not formed here the image is formed here therefore the length appears as if it's the distance between uh you and the image has increased but it's not which statement about the object uh, the image of the object formed in the plane mirror is cor is correct okay not not incorrect correct it is smaller than an object no it is the same size of an object yes and even if it's about distance, it is further away from the object. No, it is the same distance. Yes, it's not good. Okay. Say 24. An object is placed in front of a thin converging lens. The diagram shows the path of the two rays from the top of the object. The, an image of the object is formed on the screen to the right of the lens. How does this image compare to the object? So first, if you've done enough past papers, you'd already know what the answer is. But if you haven't, we're just gonna we're gonna draw the image first so let's draw the image there we go sorry it took me so long okay so the image would form here. This would be the image. It is larger than the object. As you can see, the arrow is larger than the object. Let me just, this is the image. So how does the image compare with the object? It is larger and inverted. Yes, you can see it's inverted, it's up and down. And it is larger. It's not the same way up and larger. It is not smaller and inverted. It is larger and inverted. 25. Here are three statements about the speed of electromagnetic waves. One, the speed of electromagnetic wave in vacuum is 240 meters per second. No, that's the speed of sound in air. The speed of electromagnetic wave in vacuum is 3 to 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Yes. The speed of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum is approximately the same as in air. Yes. Two and three are correct. So the answer for number 25 is C. 26. The, speak the sound from a loudspeaker must pass through two materials to reach a microphone. It's sound. Sound is a what wave? It's a medium wave. Therefore, denser the medium is equals to higher the speed of sound because it needs medium to propagate and if you have the medium is the denser the medium the more it propagates which combination of materials gives the shortest time for the sound to reach the microphone so we have to choose which materials are the dentist the, not dentist densest the first material obviously copper is denser than air and water and in two, we have, obviously, aluminum is denser. So the answer for 26 is C. Which method does not demagnetize a bar? Okay, 
A, heat the magnet and place it in an east-west direction to cool. Does that demagnetize it? Yes, it does. B, place the bar magnet in an east-west direction and hammer it. That also demagnetizes it. C, place the bar in a coil and a connect it to an AC supply. Yes, that also demagnetizes it. Place the bar magnet in a coil connected to a DC supply. That actually magnetizes it, not demagnetize. So the answer for 27 is D, 28. Three piles of small nails, P, Q, and R, are placed on a bench below three electromagnetics. One set of nails is made from copper, one from soft iron, and one from steel. Diagram 1 shows the situation when the electromagnets are switched on. Diagram 2 shows the situation when the electromagnets are switched off. Okay, in 1, the, the switches of the electromagnet are closed or switched on. And in 2, the switches are open, that means it's switched off. Now, R stayed magnetized, Q got magnetized and then demagnetized, and P didn't even react to magnetism. Which row identifies the materials from the nails are made? So, uh, okay, let's first talk about iron. Iron is paramagnetic, so it magnetizes, but then it demagnetizes as well. So, iron would be, I think it would be Q, because it magnetizes and then it demagnetizes as well. And steel, we know it becomes into a permanent magnet. So R is steel because it became into a permanent magnet. And copper is obviously P. It does not get magnetized, neither temporarily nor permanently. 29. A magnet is suspended by a cotton thread. The magnet is displaced and then allowed to shrink sweetly until it comes to rest. Why does the magnet always come to rest pointing in the same direction? Okay, this is because the magnet has a north to south, right? The magnet has its own magnetic field. Now, we know that the earth naturally has its own magnetic field. It doesn't have an electric field. It does, but uh, we focus more on the magnetic field because it's very prominent. That's basically what the compass works on. The compass directs towards the earth's magnetic field because it's the largest and the most powerful magnetic field there is to exist. Therefore, when the magnetic field of the magnet that's suspended by a cotton thread when that lines up with the magnetic field of the earth that's when it comes to rest so the answer for this would be d because of the interaction between the magnetic field of the magnet and the magnetic field of the earth 30 a student rubs a plastic rod with a cloth the rod becomes positively charged it has lost electrons that's why it became positively charged because you know that only electrons can either be gained or lost Protons can neither be gained nor lost. When you lose the electrons, we're left with positive cations. Therefore, it becomes positive. 31. An isolated metal sphere is positively charged. It is then brought near to another isolated metal sphere that is neutral. What happens to the charges on the neutral sphere as the positively charged sphere is brought close to it? Okay, A. Okay, let's just talk about this first. When you bring a neutral sphere closer, because of this positive, because of so many positive charged metal spheres, what happens? The electrons are attracted towards it. All the electrons that existed even over here, okay, they were all around, they brought closer towards the left-hand side. Now, since the positive ions cannot move, we still have the same positive ions everywhere. However, since they moved from the right hand side and they moved towards the left, this area now becomes electron deficient and this one has extra electrons. So this one basically becomes negatively charged and this area becomes positively charged. So let's see which explanation agrees to this. Uh, 31. Some positive charges move to the left. No, positive charges cannot move. Some positive charges move to the right. No, they cannot move. D. This is correct. Because it says that the positive charges do not move, but some negative charges move to the left. Anything that has positive charges move is just incorrect in any question. 32. Which circuit has a zero reading on the ammeter? Now we have diodes, and diodes only around uh, allow current to move when they're in a forward base direction. So we have a positive here, current starts moving, and yes, it goes past because this is forward base. And the current, there is current on this in this uh, circuit. So there's not a zero on the ammeter. Let's see B, positive to negative. We start off. 
Yes, there's current in this one too. C. Positive to negative. Yes, this is forward based. This is also forward based. So yes, there's current here too. D. Current starts from positive. We go here. This is forward based. Aha, this is reverse based. So current does not pass this because it's reverse based. So the answer for 32 is D. 33. Two 10 ohm resistors are connected in series and then in parallel. What is the combined resistance in each case? You know when something is con con when resistors are connected in series, the total resistance total resistance increase is more than any of the resistors. It's more than obviously 10 ohms. And in parallel, total resistance will be less than 10 ohms. So what is the combined resistance in each case? Obviously in series, it will be more than 10. And in parallel, it will be less than 10. You don't even have to calculate anything in this. See, for 34, we have this question with logic gates. Therefore, I place this table with all the logic gates to the table for you guys. So, okay. The diagram shows a combination of four logic gates that produce an output signal at R that depends on the states of inputs of P and Q. So we have, t let's see how many inputs and outputs we have. First, we have two inputs, P and Q. And then the outputs that they have act as inputs for this gate. And the output for this gate then acts as input for the next gate. Okay, let's label our gates first so that it's easier for us. We have two NOT gates first. NOT, NOT. Then we have an AND gate. Then we have another NOT gate. Now let's make a table here so things are easier. Okay. We have our input. We have output. Now we're told which single logic gate produces the same effect as this entire combination. Therefore, this would act as one logic gate. And whatever logic the gate this is, the inputs would be P and Q, and the outputs would be R. Okay? This entire thing would act as one single logic gate. Now let's start with our inputs. Okay. First, for our NOT gates, let's just say, uh, oh, okay, obviously this is P and Q and the output is R. Let's say our inputs are 1 and 1, 1 and 1. Now for NOT gates, if you have a 1, the output is 0. So 0, 0. The inputs 0, 0 for an AND gate 0, 0 gives us an output of 0. Now for a NOT gate, the input of 0 gives us an output of 1. There's a 0 gives us an output of 1. So 1, 1, the output produced is 1. Okay, now let's do we're gonna have one zero and then zero zero one and zero for not gate will give us a sorry one and zero gives us a zero and one as you know for the not gate whatever goes in the opposite comes out now for and gate zero and one gives us a zero and on the not gate zero input gives us an output of one so the output is one okay now we have 0, 0. 0, 0 gives us an output of 1, 1. 1, 1 in AND gates gives us an output of 1. 1 input for a NOT gate gives us an output of a 0. Now which gate gives us these results? For 1, 1, we have a 1. Okay, not in uh, an AND gate. 1, 1, we have a 1, yes, in AND gate. 1, 1, we have a 1, yes, in OR gate not in this so it's not any of these it's either or or and zero one gives us a one zero one does not give us a one here zero one gives us a one here zero zero gives us a zero so it is or gate therefore the answer for 34 is d 35 a solenoid is connected to a very sensitive ammeter a rod is inserted into one end of the solenoid the ammeter shows that there's a small electric current in the solenoid while the rod is moving which rod is being inserted obviously if this was just a metal rod we will not have an electric current in the solenoid why would it why would why would bringing a metal 
closer and backwards from a metal generate an electric field in one metal it just does not make sense obviously this is going to be a magnetized steel bar this would be a steel magnet or whatever type of magnet you know that when the magnetic field around or through a solenoid changes or any electrical conductor it produces an emf which in turn produces a current in the metal solenoid therefore the answer for 35 is b a magnetized steel coil this the rod would be a magnetized steel coil 36 the diagram shows a transformer what is the output voltage now we know that number of turns of primary upon number of turns of secondary is equal to voltage of primary upon voltage of secondary now primary turns we have 550 upon secondary turns 115 is equals to voltage of primary is 22000 upon voltage of secondary now if you calculate these values the answer is c 4600 okay 37 which row correctly states how nuclei behave during nuclear fission and during nuclear fusion fusion they join together fusion nuclei join together fission obviously they split because if fusion is joined then fission is split so the answer is c 38 the charge on a proton is e Okay, if a proton is E, the charge, then the charge of an electron is minus E. Okay, what is the charge of an electron and charge of a neutron? Electron would be minus E and neutron is zero. Neutron has no charge. So 38 is D. Some radioactive decay, nuclear decay, to give new nuclei, which are also radioactive, part of series of decay is shown. How many decays involve the emission of beta particles? Okay, we go from 92 to 90. Therefore, we've lost two protons. That leads to alpha emission, the emission of one alpha. Now, we go from 90 to 91. That's a gain in neutron. That means a loss in electron. Or we have one beta particle that has been released here. Okay, uh, next we have from 91, we got 92. Again, another beta particle released. We go from 92 to 90. This is decrease in uh, decrease in protons. Therefore, we've lost an alpha, alpha particle lost. Now, 90 to, 90 to 88, also another alpha particle loss. So, 39, the answer is B, two beta uh, emissions. 40, the graph shows the activity of a radioactive source over a period of time. What is the half-life of the source? Now, let's use this graph to find out the half-life. First, we have 120, and after that is 60. So when we move from 120 to 60, the time taken is from 0 to 2. 2 seconds is the, uh, sorry, 2 minutes is the half time. Let's use another example. We go from 60, 60 to 30. 60 to 30, it takes, we will go from 2 to 4 minutes. That's a total of 2 minutes again. So the answer is B. And we're done with this paper. If you guys don't understand anything, please mention in the comments and I will try my best to get back to you. And I will see you guys in the next video.